All right, biology students, today we are focusing on DNA replication. Um, this is the second video series in our um, genetics unit. So if you have not already watched the DNA and RNA structure and function video, make sure that you go back and watch that first um, and then come back to DNA replication. All right, so if you are in class today, we are just reviewing what we talked about in that last lesson. Um, so if you're watching online, then you can just, on a scratch sheet of paper, just number one to eight and see if you can answer these questions. So pause the video, see how well you do, and then come back, we'll go over the answers. All right, number one, blank and blank are two types of nucleic acids. You should have put DNA and RNA, so we talked about those in the last lesson. Both are nucleic acids made of monomers that we call nucleotides. Number three, DNA is a double-stranded molecule that includes the sugar deoxyribose. That's where it gets its name from. But it also contains two other components to that nucleotide, which is a phosphate and then four nitrogenous bases. Number four, the four nitrogenous bases for DNA include adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Number five, RNA is a single-stranded molecule that includes the sugar ribose, and then it also includes a phosphate and four nitrogenous bases. Number six, the four nitrogenous bases for RNA, three are going to be the same as they were for DNA, so adenine, cytosine, guanine but we're not going to see thymine in an RNA molecule. Thymine is going to be replaced with uracil. Now we have base pairing rules that we learned in the last lesson. So number seven, the base pairing rules for DNA are A pairs with T, so adenine and thymine pair together, and then C pairs with G, so cytosine and guanine pair together. And then for RNA, remember we're not going to have thymine, so A won't pair with T in RNA, A will pair with U. So adenine and uracil will pair, and then cytosine will pair with guanine. All right, so be sure that you take all of the notes that you can in this lesson. If you're following along with um, my fill-in-the-blank notes, um, just pause the video as needed. So if you'll look at the image to the right of the screen, um, this is not anything that's new to us. So we saw this same image when we uh, were in our sales unit. And what we are looking at here is the process of mitosis. Um, and so we have one parent cell, which eventually will turn into two daughter cells. And we learned when we talked about mitosis that um, these daughter cells are genetically identical to the parent cell. Now, whenever these cells divide via mitosis, the DNA has to first be copied. So what we see here is we have the parent cell, and then we can see um, that parent cell, those chromosomes are going to be duplicated. And so we see that we have two duplicated chromosomes here, and we know that those duplicated chromosomes are important because we're going to need them to separate into two identical daughter cells so that these daughter cells look identical to the parent cell. So this process here, before mitosis begins, this process is called DNA replication. And during uh, DNA replication, we're just making an exact copy of the DNA. Now, just a reminder, this is going to happen in interphase, specifically S phase of interphase. So that's our synthesis part. All right, so again, you've got to know your base pairing rules. So A pairs with T. I'm talking about DNA, C pairs with G. And so what we know is DNA during replication, DNA can be used as a template to make new DNA. Um, and so if you're following along with my notes, there's a place on your notes where I give you um, the, a strand of DNA and I ask you to write the complementary strand using your base pairing rules. So pause the video and take just a second to do that. And then you should have something that looks like this. All right, so since DNA replication uses DNA as a template, we say that it's semi-conservative. So semi-conservative just means that each DNA molecule is going to consist of an original strand, and then we're going to get a new strand. And this is what the process looks like. So here we can see that double helix DNA molecule. In the center, we have our nitrogenous bases. 
And what we're about to learn is there's a lot of enzymes that are working in the process of DNA replication. Um, and one of those enzymes is helicase, and it's going to come in here and unzip this DNA molecule. Um, so it's going to just slice right through these nitrogenous base pairs, and it's going to separate. You can see here this blue ribbon. It's going to separate the original strand of DNA, and then that original strand is going to serve as a template for the new nucleotides that are coming going to come in. And then those new nucleotides are going to come in, and base pairing rules are at work here. Um, they're going to pair up, and then you can see at the bottom of the image here, we're starting to get a new strand of DNA here, and a new strand of DNA here. And so in the end, we're going to have two identical sets to the original strand of DNA. Um, it's important to note, so let me go back just a second. Um, I mentioned earlier that an enzyme called helicase is going to come in and just zip right through these nucleotides, and it's going to separate these nucleotides. Um, and the reason why it can do that so easily is because those nucleotides are held together by bonds, but these bonds are hydrogen bonds. And so we talked about this in Unit 1. Hydrogen bonds are very weak, so this is going to make this process of unzipping that DNA pretty easy. Now, there are tons of enzymes at work to help in the process of DNA replication. In this lesson, we are going to focus on three. So just know there are more enzymes at work, but for this lesson, a beginner lesson, we are going to focus on helicase, DNA polymerase, and then ligase. So just quickly as an overview, helicase is going to separate our DNA strands. I mentioned that earlier. And then DNA polymerase is going to come in and add nucleotides from the nuclear environment. DNA polymerase also proofreads, which is great. Ligase is going to link new pieces of DNA together. So let's look at this in picture form. So if you have a copy of the notes from my class, you have this picture um, in your notes. If not, you can just look at the screen for the picture. Um, so again, we're focusing on three important enzymes. There are more enzymes at work here, but these are the three that we want to know for today. Uh, and just a reminder, anytime we have this ASE, um, a term that ends in the suffix ASE, that lets us know that we have an enzyme. So here we have helicase, DNA polymerase, and then ligase. So we're going to start with helicase. You can see this triangle shape here represents the enzyme helicase. And it's going to come in. You see our DNA molecule, our parent DNA molecule. It's going to come in and just zip right through those nucleotides. It's going to break those hydrogen bonds. And then now each separate half of the DNA can now serve as a template for the creation of a new strand of DNA, which is what's happening up here. And this separation exposes all of these nitrogenous bases on both sides of the DNA, uh, and they're being exposed to the nuclear environment. And at this point, these free nucleotides that are just floating around in the nucleus are going to come in. Um, they're present. They're going to come in, and they're going to use base pairing rules to sort of pair up. So you can see here, DNA polymerase is doing its job. It's going to add those free nucleotides to the original template strand. And it does that by creating new hydrogen bonds between um, these nitrogenous bases. Nucleotides are added following base pairing rules. So we can see here C and G are paired, A and T are paired, cytosine and guanine are paired. And then DNA polymerase is also going to check itself to make sure that those nucleotides are added correctly. Now, these newly attached nucleotides form a mirror image or what we call complementary strand on each template or each um, strand of the original DNA. And so as a result, um, oh, I didn't mention ligase. Let me go back. So ligase is going to come in and just kind of crimp those together. It's going to link those nucleotides together. So we don't want to forget about ligase. Now, if you're trying to get that in word form, so if you want to copy down what I just said in word form, um, this is what you'll need to put in your notes. So this is just what we went over here in image form. So the enzyme helicase is going to come in and unzip or separate the two strands of DNA. And then the DNA polymerase is going to come in and add those nucleotides from the nuclear environment. And it's going to use the old strand as a template for doing that. And then finally, ligase is going to link together 
uh, the pieces of that new DNA. So as a result, we're going to get two duplicate models of a molecule um, from the original DNA molecule. So DNA replication, the process of making um, two strands of DNA that are identical for, to one another from an original parent strand. And that ends our lesson for today. Uh, in our next lesson, we're going to be focusing our attention on RNA and its role in synthesizing proteins. So I will see you in that next lesson.